Um, moving right along, as Carl said, we're going to run late if we don't uh, keep, uh, keep things moving. Um, it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce a, another very um, learned person who is also concentrating on, on happiness and well-being within workplaces. And I'm talking, of course, of um, Robin Rankin, who's going to talk to us this morning about respectful behaviours in the workplace. Thank you. Would you please join me in, in welcoming Robin? Really, when we're talking about developing work, respectful workplace behaviours in the workplace, it starts with how we communicate and how we behave. And each and every one of us actually can choose how we communicate and behave with each other at work. That re then results in a positive, respectful place to work or a negative, stressful experience. And that actually starts to create the way we do things around here, the norms of behaviour and what we actually value in the workplace. And then what we create is our culture, whether it's a respectful, healthy culture or one that's stressful and unhealthy. What do I mean by building respectful behaviours in the workplace? It's what I call above the line and below the line behaviour. And we all know what actually builds a healthy culture. We know what's respectful behaviours. You know, it's valuing others, it's respecting differences, you know, it's actually sharing team morning teas, it's being inclusive, it's about being very helpful, what else can I do? But then we have the other side, which we um, experience. So what constitutes disruptive and disrespectful behaviour? It's behaviour that actually creates a stressful work environment. It's behaviours that actually create a hostile or very stressful environment. It can be yelling, verbal abuse, um, white anting, gossiping, you know, mouthing off about colleagues. So we all actually know what creates below the line behaviour. You know, we've experienced in our workplace the undermining that goes on. We've experienced the put downs, the them against us. But it's up to each and every one of us to actually go back into our workplaces and say we're not going to have disrespectful behaviours from this day forth. We're actually going to start to respect each other in the workplace. And far too often managers and peers tolerate poor behaviour. And then what that does is teach and show each and every one of us, and especially new employees that come into the workplace, that it's actually okay to be disrespectful. So when I go out and talk to teams and groups about building respect in the workplace, this is actually how I go about it. So what I'm showing you this morning is you know, a 10 minute version of what would normally take me three hours or maybe a day workshop. My very first exercise when I go out and work with teams is actually just to have a little sticky, sticky notes on each of the tables and start to write down as we, as we continue through the workshop what are some behaviours that you actually would like to change in the workplace. And people say, oh, I don't know. But once they start writing on a sticky note, you know, usually a person will keep writing and we get about, you know, up to about 20 little sticky notes and then they say to me, oh, I have more. So it's actually a really good way to start talking about with teams what behaviours we'd like to begin to change. Then I move on to another group exercise when I'm working with teams on building respectful behaviours and discuss what communication and behaviour they would like to change. And so we, we, you know, I say to them, how do we communicate and behave around here? We look at all the areas that, that we have in our workplaces these might be the same in your workplace or they might be a little different. It's how we answer the phone, it's how we respond to clients without taking breaks. And when I'm running a workshop, I start with the sticky notes and then work on. And what we come up with, so these are all below the line behaviours that teams would like to change in the workplace. You know, if you pretend not to see clients or other staff, you actually don't have to exchange greetings. You can just put your head down and keep working or not hear the telephone ringing. It's okay to be moody and angry in our workplace. It's just the way we do things around here. 
know, when someone asks you to keep something in confidence, you know, you can guarantee everyone will know in the office within 10 minutes. I don't know about you, but I've certainly worked in workplaces similar to that. Work under performance is never addressed, and if it is, you'll be called a bully. There are just some examples of when I'm going out working with teams that teams come up with that they would actually like to change. You know, this is just an example. You know, there's plenty. You, you, can, ch you can exchange this with lots of others, malicious gossiping at the photocopier. But this is one. You know, you're a work colleague who observes another team member just standing at the door of your colleague's office yelling, I'm not paid X amount, using expletives. You know, I'm not the office admin around here. I've got better things to do than spend my time doing admin work. That's what you have admin for, yelling, storming, norming. So, you know, what do your colleagues say when you hear that sort of behaviour in the workplace? Oh, so just get over it? You know, they're just a bit frustrated? You know, especially they'll be a bit volatile, they're a bit volatile or emotional, their nature's a bit unpredictable, they'll be as good as gold tomorrow. I don't know about you, but I've heard that many a time in the workplace. And so what I say to work teams when I go out and work them is you really, we really need to start to resolve, if we're actually going to build a mentally healthy workplace, we need to start to resolve some of these issues locally and early when they start. Now, if we were to actually address behaviour at the bottom of the pyramid, it wouldn't have to be escalated up into full investigations in workplaces which actually create um, psycholo psychological harm in the workplace. The whole team gets involved. So it's about self-resolution at the bottom of the pyramid. Keeping in mind that the mass, vast majority of employees, you know, really do a good job. You know, it's just the minority that we need to work with. So self-resolution, the aim is to communicate what behaviour is actually unacceptable and distressi distressing, and the outcome of self-resolution is for the person to actually understand the impact that their behaviour has had on others in the work team and, and resolve the issue. And this is just how, a very quick, how I start when I'm working with work teams, how I go about teaching people around self-resolution. It's about really appreciating, you know, the person that you're going to actually raise an issue with and then going through, you know, I heard, I saw, briefly reviewing the incident, asking for their view, responding to questions, but actually always holding people accountable and then helping them find a way forward. And then closing the conversation is very similar to the opening of the conversation, offering appreciation, being empathetic, but holding people accountable and then working with them to move forward to be actually behaving differently in the future. Then I move on to actually providing and doing another exercise on um, self-resolution. So it's about practicing that. Then when I'm working with managers, you know, when should a manager get involved? You know, often they tell me, well, you know, I didn't see it. So how, you know, how can I get involved? Unless they put it in writing, I can't do anything about it. You know, what prevents managers from, from acting? You know, HR will say, well, why didn't you nip this behaviour in the bud? But quite often I hear from managers, oh, you know, the person that got abused they're just making mountains out of molehills. They just need to be more resilient. Or I think the other person contributed. So the poor admin that was getting yelled and screamed at, I, you know, I think they must have contributed to causing the person to be angry with them. Or it'll just make things worse, or it's just all too hard. <coughs> so what I say to managers is you must address behaviour that actually affects the work environment and actually affects your business. That's what your job is. You know, if, there's create, if you've got stressful work environments, it's up to managers to work with their teams to change them, to change that. Ask yourself, does the employee have a pattern of disrespectful behaviour? Does the person undermine the work environment? Have they apologised? Because that actually shows insight. And if they haven't apologised, you need to step in. Anticipate reactions. On that earlier example of the yelling, storming, norming, you know, when you describe exactly what their behaviour was, the staff member responds with, you know, the admin caused me to be angry. It was their fault. You know, I exploded because. 
It's not just me. Everybody else can tell you it's the admin. This is blame shifting. You just need to know. Stay on message. Create a new neutral opening. Hold the other, per you know, have the other person describe what happened. Ask questions. Focus on the facts and the behaviour, not the emotion of the situation. Move the conversation to what you want in the future. Disrespectful behaviours in the workplace really affect our team. It affects team morale, it increases sick leave, and increases stress claim, and lots and lots of other things. But not only that, it affects the mental health and well-being, which is what we're talking about this morning, of, of the rest of the team. And when, there's, when you're working in really stressful environments, you emotionally are either in a fight, flight or freeze. You can't possibly be as productive as, w as we would like to be when you're emotionally stressed. So it does actually impact our mental health and well-being, which then impacts our bottom line. So it's really important that each and every one of us actually takes this back to our workplaces and starts to build um, a respectful, healthy culture. And remembering it's everybody's job to ensure a safe working environment. The next exercise I do is that, you know, I'm the fairy godmother, I wave my magic wand and you all wake up in a, you know, the best workplace you've ever been in, where staff are really supportive, where clients are getting their needs met. And we, we work through an exercise of actually what can we do to change some of those behaviours into being more productive and, re and respectful. What we come up here with, you know, they're very simple things usually that teams come up with which actually don't cost any money at all. You know, we treat people like we'd like to be treated. You know, we're just nice to each other. You know, we resolve issues as they arise. So these actually become behaviours that the team begins to commit with in changing the way we do things around here. Then I talk about the behaviour cycle, which actually takes quite a long time, but it's really important to understand that your self-esteem in the workplace influences your behaviour. People, people actually only see your behaviour. People react to your behaviour. People develop opinions about you with your behaviour. Their opinions lead to their behaviour towards you. So we actually unpack that. And their behaviour influences my self-esteem. So it's really, really important to understand that each and every one of us can actually change our behaviour and our, our behaviour impacts others and really does impact the work environment. And then the very last exercise when I'm working with, with work teams on building really respectful cultures at work is to get each and every staff member that I work with to commit to actually changing three of their behaviours, taking those back into the workplace and practising them for the next 30 days. Normally I actually get team members to sign and date and really support each other too. So what I've presented to you, with, to you this morning in 10 minutes is what um, I work with teams and managers on building respectful behaviours. So that's a really just a really fast overview of how you can go back and work with your teams on building respectful behaviours in the workplace. And Mahatma Gandhi said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. And if each and every one of us were to go back to our workplaces, we would change our cultures, build much more positive working environments, and that would really, you know, if we would all to do that, Tasmania actually could become, you know, the employer state in Australia and we could all do that within the next 12 months. So thank you.